All right, so let's say that we wanted to prove that the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x plus 1. Let's say we wanted to prove that that limit was equal to 7. Now, hopefully you already know that if we have a polynomial, polynomials are defined everywhere, and so the limit of a polynomial as you approach some specific value is just plug the value in. In other words, 3 times 2 plus 1 is 6 plus 1. Da da. So we could be done, except our job here is to use that precise epsilon delta definition. And since that's probably why you're watching this video, is to get a sense of how to do that, let's see what we need to do. So there's really two steps that we have to follow. One of them is to guess, if I can just spell guess. Okay, well, instead of guessing, let's guess the value of delta. And then we have to actually do the proof. So how can we come up with a guess for the value of delta that's, that's going to work? Remember, I, I said we wanted delta to be some relation to epsilon already. Well, let's use the fact that we have to get the absolute value of the function f of x, which is 3x plus 1 in this case, minus the limit, which is 7 in this case, has to be less than whatever epsilon. So what do we mean here? 3x plus 1 minus 7. Well, we can lose those parentheses. That's just 3x plus 1 minus 7. So that's really the absolute value of 3x minus 6. But since 3 is just a number, we can take it out of the absolute value bar. So that's really the absolute value of 3 times x minus 2, which has to be less than epsilon. And remember the other part of our epsilon delta definition that 0 has to be less than the absolute value of x minus our limiting value there. So that's x minus 2, which has to be less than or equal to delta. Looky, looky, x minus 2 is showing up here and here. And that's no coincidence. So 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is always going to be less than delta. x minus 2, therefore, must always be less than epsilon over 3. So that suggests, then, that if delta were epsilon over 3, we'd basically be home free. The absolute value of x minus 2 would then be less than delta. So let's make the guess that delta equals epsilon over 3. That was a 3. I meant that to be a 3 with a little hiccup in it. So trust me. OK, so let's do the proof. So officially, we kind of need to recreate these steps here. So let's just uh, do that. Um, I'll get myself a fresh writing screen here and a nice pencil to write with. So I am going to start with the fact that the function 3x plus 1 minus the limit, the absolute value thereof, must be, well, actually, let's just for the moment, let's pretend I didn't draw in that because we already showed that that can be, by a series of little simple mathematical manipulations, can be set to 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay, um, and I also said we were going to use delta, looks more like a musical note, delta was going to be epsilon over 3, which means, by very simple math, which I'm sure you can follow, that epsilon must be equal to 3 times my little magic value delta there. That looks less, less like a musical note. Um, still can put a little face on it, though. Anyway, but epsilon has to be equal to 3 delta. And I already showed in an earlier step that 
3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 was always going to be less than epsilon. So, since 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon, and epsilon equals 3 delta, that means that 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 must be less than 3 delta. So, let's just put that into our chain of logic here. I wrote an equal sign here, but I shouldn't have because it's actually less than. 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 3 delta. And since delta equals epsilon over 3, then 3 delta must equal 3 times epsilon over 3, which means it equals epsilon. So what have we accomplished here? Seems like we, how, how does that help us to prove that all this equals epsilon? Well, the key thing is all these equal signs sort of disappear. This less than symbol is the king daddy there. What we have done is we have shown that the absolute value of our function minus the limit, in other words, the distance from the function to the limit, will always be less than epsilon, because all those other equal signs just say that this part is equal to the thing that we proved was less than the thing we proved equal to that part. And that's how you do one of those proofs using the precise definition of a limit. Now we have proven beyond a doubt that this is so, that this limit is genuinely two, because we have found a guaranteed delta value which will always make the distance from the function to the limit less than epsilon. Now that may be all that you'll be called on to do in your class, but it's just possible that you might be asked to do a somewhat more complicated one. So let's also take a look at a bit more complicated example and then I will show you how you'll never really have to do this ever again in your life.